A hook and eye clasp is a really nice alternative to a toggle or a lobster clasp because they're very easy to put on. You just hook them on like this. They're very secure if your project is fitted properly. You can use different gauges of wire and different um, sizes of tools to make these clasps in different sizes depending on the project you're going to put it on. I am going to start making my hook and eye clasp. I have my wire that I'm going to make my spiral hook clasp. In this case, this is 16 gauge soft sterling silver wire. I have a longer piece than I need because it's much easier to manipulate the wire when it's long like this rather than pre-cutting your wire. However, if you want to know how much wire you're actually using for your project, you can either start with a known length of wire, like exactly one foot, or you can mark along the wire with a sharpie pen, say like three inches. <coughs> this and then you're just going to subtract the remainder that's left to figure out how much wire you used in your clasp. So for the first step in making your spiral hook clasp, we are going to start with the spiral. You want to be sure that the end of your wire is flush cut, meaning that it's cut flat on the end before you get started. You don't want to work with a pointy bar. Okay, so if it's not already trimmed, then trim it down so that it is nice and flat, just like that. Okay, then we're going to get our round nose plier, and I'm going to grab as close to the tip of the wire as I can, I'll, between one third and halfway down the jaw of the plier, like this. And you want to make sure that this wire is not sticking out past the jaws of the plier because then you'll end up with a very flat spot on your spiral. You want it so that it doesn't stick out at all. I'm going to brace the wire with my thumb on my left hand and curl my wrist so that the palm faces me like this. And so I have my curl started here. I'm going to tighten the curl by squeezing it with my chain nose plier just to make it a little bit smaller in case it was a little bit too big when you turned it on your round nose plier. And I'm going to put my round nose plier back into that loop and use it as an anchor to form my spiral. <coughs> And notice how I don't mold the wire around the jaw of the plier. I'm just using the pliers as a way to anchor the wire so I can manipulate it. You can make the spiral as big as you want. I just want sort of a small spiral so I didn't keep going. I wire around so you see how my wire is curling towards me. Then I'm going to come in with my wrap and tap plier. This happens to be my sixth step wrap and tap plier, and I'm going to form the hook portion of my spiral hook around step number four of my six step wrap and tap. So with the spiral curling towards me, I'm going to pinch the wire so that the step number four is farther away from me like this. So notice that I have step number four farther away from my body and I'm going to push the wire with my thumb around the number four jaw away from me like this. Then you can turn your piece over and we can start the curve closer to the spiral by putting the step number four of the plier back into the hook and just kind of molding it around the jaw of the wrap and tap like that. And you see how it's curved a little bit closer to the spiral. I'm going to pick up my round nose plier again and put it into my hook, kind of where the wire overlaps the spiral. And I'm going to push the wire away from me to start my bend. That becomes the tip of my hook. Like this. 
gonna get my flush cutter, put the back of the cutter against my piece like this and trim. And I'm gonna pick up my chain nose plier and because the spiral part's in the way when I'm gonna squeeze it, I lift up the wire like this. And I'm gonna use my chain nose plier to kind of squeeze a teeny loop at the end of my hook. This. I like a really small loop at the very end of my hook because this is a part that's going to push into your bracelet or necklace or just the end of your piece and you don't want to have to use a very large ring at the end I just want it to be kind of rounded on the tip I don't want a really huge loop or else you're gonna to have to use a bigger ring at the other end of your piece okay so I minimize the size of this loop here then you can swivel it flat like this so now your hook is nice and flat and ready to be hammered. Now we're going to hammer our spiral hook clasp. I have my bench block over here and I'm going to use a metal chasing hammer to both flatten my wire and harden my clasp. And I'm going to just hammer certain portions of my clasp with the metal hammer and it's going to be the tip of the hook here this curve over here, and the bottom curve of my spiral. Try not to hammer your finger. I don't usually hammer the entire thing with the metal hammer. I like to have just some contour and specific areas where I hammer so it has some flare to the wire and it's not all flattened. You'll notice that when you hammer your clasp, the curves will start to open up and your metal will shift. So this portion, the space here may get a little bit wider and your curve here may loosen up a little bit, but don't worry because once you're done hammering, you can adjust the shape after. I think that texturing is important to a piece because it gives it that really nice handmade look. It adds another element of texture to your piece so it's not just a flat piece of wire. You can also hide or distract from some of the imperfections in your wire working. Say you nicked the wire or gouged it a little bit when you were shaping it. Texturing it will kind of mask that a little bit better. And it looks really nice, too. I really like the look of textured metal. Okay, so after we finished hammering and texturing our piece, you can go back with your pliers and tighten up your curves just a little bit, especially if this section here spread out a lot. You want this space to be closed, otherwise your clasp will be able to come off of your piece, which we don't want. So, use my round nose plier to kind of make this loop go closer to this wire here. And you notice now my space has been closed off. Okay, you can also make this space at the end of the hook, a little bit smaller so the fit will be tighter on the ring that you're gonna use to close your clasp. And if you want to harden the wire even more without flattening it, you can use your nylon hammer here to just hit the metal lots of times to make it nice and strong. The nylon hammer will harden your wire without flattening the metal, which is what I want in this case. Okay, and there we go. We have our finished spiral hook clasp.